Welcome to the Hank Cisco Show. Don't touch that remote. Got a good show today. I have a retired judge from Philadelphia. Now, he was on the bench for 27 years, and he retired. And he's. And you'll hear more about what he's doing now. But, you know, usually when a guy retires, they, they wear themselves out. They go, blah, 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 boom. He looks like he just got out of law school. My friend, Paul, Panapito, how do you say right. that? Panapito, how uh, are you? Pito. And you. how I know him is that when I was a juvenile court, uh, um, when I was a juvenile police officer doing juvenile work, I had to deal with Philadelphia, and that's how we got to met, meet each other. And not only that, but he is related to Al Panapino, who is the architect for our Columbus Monument in Norristown. Fabulous man, yeah. you know. So we'll hear more about the Columbus uh, Monument. But now we're going to talk to Judge Paul. Paul, tell me something about yourself. What are you doing now? Oh, great. I'm, uh, I'm actually enjoying life a little bit. Good, good. Uh, I don't have to get into the office and adjudicate and work on cases. Yeah. But uh, I really uh, took an interest in uh, helping out my alumni association at St. Thomas More High School and uh, working on, you know, promoting scholarships for Catholic education for youth. And, and we do a great job on that. Give over $100,000 a year in scholarships. So I'm the chairman of that committee. I'm also I mean, now, how does that work now? People donate money or what? Well, yeah, the, um, actually, the people pass away because our, our school is no longer, uh, doesn't exist. And so a lot of people who are alumni from that school leave money to the Alumni Association. Oh, okay. So it's a kind of an ongoing trust that we have with the Archdiocese. And uh, we fund uh, scholarships for Catholic education. Yeah. Uh, also, there's a strong alumni association presence, and all the members pay dues, have meetings and events, and raise some money. Yeah. So I've been active in that now, and uh, also well, I'm a member of the Board of City Trust. It's an elected position by the uh, Court of Common Pleas, my colleagues on the bench. What, they, what do they do? Well, the Board of City Trust uh, uh, manages funds that are left to the uh, City of Philadelphia. And one of the biggest uh, trust funds that we have is the Stephen Gerard estate money. Stephen Gerard uh, College. Uh, the college. And all the kids go there without paying anything. They right, live there, right. Yeah. But that's somebody uh, that somebody had to die in a family or so? Well, they, they, they children, erase that. Or at least one parent. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. And it, it, it's very interesting because it's a great school. They get a great education, and we work on that. And I'm interested in that. And also, we uh, uh, you can pay weekly, wait very weekly. It's all volunteer. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm not doing it for a salary or no. for remuneration. No, it's just a wonderful chance to give back and to keep busy. You know, yeah. Give them well, you're still a lawyer, oh, right? Yes, yeah, you yeah, still yeah. have a legal license. Yes, I do. So if somebody comes to, to get some illegal advice, you got it. But you don't have to go run in the court. No. If it has to go to court. You get some young lawyer and give him a break and help so him out a little I, bit. I can refer to someone else or I can handle something myself. Yeah. But I haven't been uh, appearing in court at all. At this no, time. I don't blame you. I don't. Yeah. You were in court with juvenile yeah. court. And let me tell you, being a juvenile court judge is not easy. When you get a young juvenile that's in trouble and the mother and father work hard and their kid goes the other direction, it really... And I know when I was in court, when the judge had to sentence them, or send them, I don't know if they sent them, they Please sent them to uh, rehab or something, whatever, whether it's drugs or whether it's family bar troubles. But, you know, it's tough. You sit there and, and you see these human beings crying. You see a man crying, a woman, you know, so it's, it's tough. It's not easy, you know. So now, what else are you doing? Oh, well. I guess you, you might as well say Well, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just like because you you're, you're because you're a judge. All these judges, they all went down the drain. They had new judges, one here, one lost. Well, I guess that's statewide elections. The, there's no yeah, elections state, that was the, the state uh, job, the, the Superior Court, Supreme right. Court, 
Commonwealth Court, right? Right. At different levels. You, what? Uh, you were in juvenile. What other co uh, courts did you uh, sit in? <clears throat> well, I uh, spent the first trials ten years in the family division. I was the chief judge of the family court division in Philadelphia. Okay. Then I went into civil and did uh, civil trials, jury and non-jury, and then um, the criminal court. I spent some time there too. Oh yeah, in that. Uh, well, okay. What is some of the I'm talking about criminal adult division. Yeah. Cases. What was the joy of being a judge? There must be some joy to it. Oh, yeah. It was great. Well, let me say this. I loved adoption. Putting families together? That's right. You know, you have a lot of dysfunctional families and issues. Yeah. But getting those kids adopted, moving them from foster care into adoption, was a great sense of accomplishment for the court. And it made you feel good. And many times, you know, it's a win-win situation because the kid finds a family, and family gets a loving child to nurture and take care of, and the taxpayers don't have to pay the foster care bill. Yeah. So it's worth it um, to pr promote adoptions, and I love doing that. So I spent some time doing that and writing procedures to do it. But there's a lot of yeah. other programs that I ran, truancy program, yeah. which we created for the city of Philadelphia, which still operates today, keeps the kids out. The kids are out of school too often, and this yeah. truancy program makes them more accountable yeah. and tries to help them to get back into court. Well, from court, a area. juvenile, a juvenile yeah. under 18, right? Right. Under 18, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> now, Florida, it has their juvenile like 17 or something. I don't know what's the difference. Sometime when we have a runaway and the kid's down in Florida, right. we have to get down and pick him up. I think it's 16. But they say he's an adult. It may even be 16 in New York. I don't know. Yeah, they, they change it around. Yeah, yeah. So actually, a juvenile don't commit a crime. They commit a delinquent act. That's right. Yeah. So there's a difference. There certainly is. They're not. Yeah, I remember I was, I was a juvenile officer, and the other, the other police are, oh, Cisco, he's a diaper division, you know. He's this, you know. Yeah. But uh, when I deal with something in the police, when I had a, made an apprehension, I had to fill out a report, uh, a referral to, to go to the juvenile court, had to go to juvenile court, whereas the regular police officers, they make an arrest, they put it there, that's it, they don't hear anything until they go to court. Right. But we had to follow it right along, right. see? Yeah. And especially when a, when a kid was a runaway, we had a kid run all the way down to in Texas, had to get down and pick him up, you know, girl. Uh -huh. And she says, uh, they, they, Texas, they didn't treat the kids too tough, I mean, too uh, too nice, you know. Because as soon as I got there, they said, oh, I want to make a complaint. Uh, they, they, they're they not treating me right here. They wouldn't they wouldn't give me some paper to uh, write my mother. I want to write my mother. She said, they give me toilet paper to write, you know. Uh, <laughs> and the lady turned around and she says, maybe you would appreciate your mother. You wouldn't be down here, you know. So, oh, it's stories at the stories, you know. So, all right, now, the joy of the job is what? Well, there's, there's a lot of joys, like I said, in terms of just uh, doing the right thing, being fair. Yeah. I mean, you could feel, you know, you, have to you be. know what the facts are, you hear the evidence, and if the Commonwealth doesn't prove their case, you know, you just find them not guilty if it's a criminal case. But in, in family court and in um, even in civil court, too, you know, it's the jury that's going to make the decision in the civil. Yeah. Uh, unless you go, you waive the jury and you go directly to the judge. So I had a lot of cases where I would preside without a jury. Yeah. But in family court, you are the judge and the jury. There's yeah. no uh, jury trials. So you have the chance to evaluate the child support issues. Yeah. You know, you want to make sure uh, fathers are paying fair amount of child support and you're being fair to both parties, uh, especially custody, visitation. So it's an interesting court. There's a lot of joys in doing the yeah. work. But there's a lot of things that weigh on your mind as a judge. You yeah. know, you're upset about certain things. You wish things were different. You want to help somebody, but you know you got to stay within the confines of what's right. Yeah. But I guess the joy now is that that's over with. Take it uh, easy, you know, right? Uh, all right. Uh, now we just had a, a state election, and it looked like all the all the judges from the east lost, and all the ones from the west won. It what is it? Pennsylvania's divided yeah. on. They don't like the Eastern part, and uh, what's the story on that? Well, I, I could say from my own experience, because I ran statewide. Uh, you ran for a state for, job. For the Supreme Court and for the Commonwealth Court in Pennsylvania. 
you know, when you campaign around the state, you talk about th some things. You can't talk about a lot of issues, but you talk about yourself. You talk about some things you've done as a judge and a jurist. And the, and the communities out west and a lot of places that you visit, oh, they're impressed. You know, they seem to like it. They seem to really feel that you're a nice, qualified individual. I was highly recommended by the Bar Association. Yeah. But then they'll say, well, where are you from? I said, well, I was born and raised in Philadelphia. They go, oh. oh. So now <clears throat> that changes their tune. I don't really know what it is because I don't think the people in yeah. the East feel the same way about the West. Yeah. I've got along with everybody in the West in Pittsburgh. And it's a great city. My wife and I visit there. We stayed overnight, shopped there. We, we like it. So yes. Yeah. They have a nice environment there. But at the same time, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a... Maybe it's a pro thing. I don't know. They're all for the Steelers. I don't, don't know. The they, they don't like I the, don't know. <laughs> maybe but they don't like the sucks. Eagles <laughs> and they root for the Steelers, yeah, right? You know, I don't know. <clears throat> you know, I think. Uh, but you know. I had almost the same experience. When I was a uh, uh, juvenile officer, we, uh, we had a conference up in uh, uh, Penn State, I think it was. So they had police officers from all over Pittsburgh and all around there. So it was around 60 in the class. And uh, they said, well, Les, we got, we got to pick a president of the class, you know, for, okay. So he voted. And Commissioner um, Joe O'Neill, he was there. He was one. It was all high-ranking guys, you know. I was the only patrolman there, I think. And uh, do you know that all the guys from Reading West stuck together, and they voted for over there. And... You know, I said from Norristown, yeah. and uh, yeah, they didn't like Philadelphia. Yeah. I, don't I don't know. It was like a goofy, you know. Well, it's like anything else. You know, you can't not like everything. I mean, there's a lot of good here. We do a lot of good. There's yeah. a lot of the economy's thriving. We have a lot of things going for us in Philly, culture and education, and you you know you have a, look at all the health institutions, and yeah. things like that that we have in this area. Pittsburgh has them too, but the middle of the state and. As you go west, it is difficult because it's a different environment. A lot of agriculture, a lot of people don't have anything in common with the urban big city yeah. areas. And they think there's too much crime and too much uh, implications of yeah. other things that sways their judgment. But, you know, you have to have a balance. You yeah. have to have a balance. Yeah, right. You know, uh, talking about people uh, identify you with parts of, of uh, Pennsylvania. When I was a professional boxer, I was boxing in New York. Uh -huh. And in the dressing room, we're getting ready for the fight. I'm getting my hands back. And the, the, my opponent was in the next room. And uh, I could hear him talking. So the guy, he says, I hear him say, who's that guy I'm fighting? The guy says, his manager says, uh, Hank Sisko. Man, he says, that's a fighting name. So I listen, you know. And he says, where's he from? He says, Northtown, Pennsylvania. He says, wow. He says, boy, them guys them in the cold region, they're really tough guys. I'm not from the cold region. <laughs> so my manager said to me, don't worry about it. This guy's getting beat up in the, in the dressing room. Yeah. So my manager said, as soon as the bell rings, you go out there and throw that right hand. He's scared of you. Yeah. It was one of my easiest fights. Is I haven't right? chasing him all around the ring. <laughs> <laughs> so there is yeah. something about where you're from, the way you identify, you know. Well, you bring your talents uh, from the area where you're born and raised. You know, you have a oh, background. Yeah. yeah, so uh, hey, tell me something about your family now. What, uh, uh, you got any brothers? Well, first of all, I'm married to my wife, Nancy, for 40 years. Oh, God. We just celebrated yeah. our 40th What's her name? Anniversary. Nancy. Yeah. And uh, Nancy and I met at Villanova. Uh, went to College. School, Villanova. Yeah, we graduated there. We had our wedding at the chapel Villanova. Oh. We just had our 40th wedding. Mass. So you moved from Villanova now, right? Villanova guy. That's, <laughs> that's exactly right. A great school. A great basketball team. Uh, yeah. I have two children. My son, Paul, is 33, and my daughter, Paul. Jean, is 31. Paul works in the family court division. He's a, oh, does he? Yeah, he's an intake officer there. He was a probation officer, like I was when I started out my career. Oh, you started probation? I started probation, and that's how I got into the juvenile court and became a judge and worked in the family division. Oh. So I started out on the streets, got to know the community, what was going on. Yeah, I, yeah. You know that's the best education. If you, you, you want to swim, you got to get in the water. That's it. I, you, know. you, you knew what was I, going on. We worked with the police. We worked with the court. 
And my son likes that. There's a little bit of social work involved in that, but he's good at what he does. And um, my uh, daughter, Lynn, is um, now at the University of Texas at Austin. She's uh, finishing her third year in a ma dual in, master's in program. In Texas? In Texas. Wow, was she there with the flood? No, no. Well, yeah, she was, but she wasn't affected by it. Oh. It just happened. She'll be graduating yeah. in May. And she'll have her degree in Latin American studies and sociology. And she's looking to come back and help the community. And oh, work, man, that's uh, the good. Spanish that's community. great. And she's, yeah. she's really involved. Yeah. So, well, tell me an interesting story, a happy story from the your juvenile court, or family court, or something that... I'll tell you a good one. I, uh, you know, there's many stories, you know. Yeah. When you work with people, you have a lot of stories. Well, one time, we were trying to, you know, promote adoptions, and we were trying to make the system easier for people to access it so that we wouldn't to, have to, to, wait to, a to, to bit. adopt somebody. Right, in adoptions. In is it tough areas. now? Is it still it, tough? Well, it probably is because a lot of the things have changed with the Department of Human Services. But one of the things happened, one of my understudy workers come in and says, Judge, I got to talk to you. The system's not really working that well. We really need to push this through if we can. What happened was this lady was caring with her boyfriend for six young kids. And she was caring them for many years. The social workers seemed to kind of hold back on pushing the adoption through to get it to our court for adoption for the reason we found out, or at least we believe, because they weren't You make an invest investigation. Yeah, because she complained. She says, I'm, when am I going to adopt these kids? You know, I want to do it. I'm getting held back. So when they came to me, I said, I want to speak to this lady. So right then and there, we brought her in, and she explained to me. She says, I really didn't get married to the gentleman, but we're taking care of these six kids. And now I want but to they, they wasn't married, but they're living together. They're living together. And with six kids. Yes, yeah, so I think that DHS... That well, how did they get the kids? Well, foster care, they, they were doing... Their brothers and sisters. Oh, foster. Yeah, there were foster children in her home. Oh. So she was raising them, and she loved them. Yeah. So now she wanted to adopt them, but someone was holding that up. Who was holding it up? Well, we think it was through the DHS, the agency. You know what I mean? Oh, the yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah. Sometimes they, they sometimes they're upset. They, they bump into each other. Yeah. yeah, And they may have split up the family. I don't know what was going to happen. I don't want to be accusatory. But the good thing is, after I heard it, I immediately worked on this. And she said to me, she says, you know, I even want to get married. I said, you do? Okay. I said, when do you want to do that? She says, well, I want to do that as soon as possible. I said, when's your birthday? She says, oh, it's in a month. I, I knew because I had the uh, paperwork yeah, in front yeah, of me. Yeah. I says, let's do this. We'll marry you in one courtroom, adopt the kids in the, in the other and have a birthday party in the other. <laughs> <laughs> the newspapers great. all over the city covered yeah. the case. Yeah, yeah. She took on those six kids now. And yeah. look at this. The city wasn't paying her for foster care anymore. Huh. She was a loving mother, and he was a loving father with yeah. those kids. And those kids were off the city payroll as far as money. So the citizens won not having to pay her every right, month. Right, right, right. She's a loving parent having And they turn out all right. Oh, they're a great kid today. I, I, speak, I have her number, and I've talked to her over the years. When I ran for Supreme Court, she supported me. She told the news about the story. <laughs> it, it's a great story because it was a happy moment. Yes. And those kids are all grown. The littlest ones was like two years old. I have a big yeah. picture of them. Like I noticed you have several old pictures of things yeah. in your career. Well, that story. I one in my office of that adoption. Here. Yeah. You know, that story has uh, what the uh, words of wisdom, my mother. Do good, forget, do bad, regret. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you do good yeah, it was doing and good. forget. But you remember something good. It's great, you know. Happy and, moments for the family, you know. Yeah. It's good well, how about now, uh, Philadelphia politics? What's going on down there? Well, uh, the uh, new DA was elected, and we're hoping. Yeah, that there, there was a. Well, I, I don't know what's going to happen in the administration. There's going to be many changes with that. And then the but, DA went to jail. Uh, oh. He's in yeah, jail. Yeah, I know. That was very sad. Yeah. Yeah, very sad, and. Uh, his uh, sentencing, he just had his sentencing, and he's uh, serving some serious time. There are no. problems in the city, and you know, uh, you know when you make those yeah. kind of mistakes, you know, you have to be held accountable. Yeah. All right. Uh, as a 
as a Philadelphia guy, is there a difference between Philadelphia and, and Montgomery County and different counties? Mm -hmm. I mean, years ago, uh, a Philadelphia lawyer could not practice in a Montgomery County court. Is that true? Well, How was that? How did that break in through? In my older days as a lawyer, I think it was frowned upon to come into some of the counties not being from that county. I don't know if it's an effort to try to help the lawyers in each county or whether it was the rules and regulations, but the Supreme Court changed a little bit in the sense of the unified judicial system, so they want to make sure that you're able to go in any county to practice. But there are different local rules. A lot of Philadelphia lawyers aren't familiar with the rules in other counties, but they're trying as best they can to consolidate things as a unified court. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes uh, 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 Montgomery County judge might turn around and say, this sharp Philadelphia lawyer coming here to my court. I don't know whether it's good, uh, but now that they, they, they can practice any place, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Once you get a license in Pennsylvania, like now, my license was restored. I could practice anywhere in the Commonwealth. And I, and I think uh, it's a good thing. You, you, should, you had to have a license in each county? No. Oh, no. You have one license. Many, now? Yeah. I mean, before? No, but you did. Uh, many years back, you may have. I don't know. Before my time. I'm not I, sure I about think, what they I did. Think, uh, I think that somebody said you couldn't get a fill off your lawyer. So that, I don't know. It's something there. You know. Uh, yeah, I don't know how that all worked way back. But it's way before my time. But yeah. yeah. What is, what, being a lawyer... What is the most, the, 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 you take an oath, right? Right. What is something that, uh, that inspires you? I should say, I, I should inspire. But what keeps you going when you get a, from one, one case to another? You know, one case is different. One's a murder, one's a, yeah. a rape, the seer, yeah, you know. How do you keep a level thing, yeah. go home at night? Well, I have to say your main job would be um, to protect your client. So your client comes to you with a problem and an issue. And now we're talking, it could be criminal, it could be a civil case, it could be a family law, a dispute between parties. So your job is to protect your client's rights. We all have rights under the Constitution, and we all have those rights that need to be protected. So your lawyer is your advocate. If I felt I could not serve you as your advocate, I wouldn't take those cases. So I think you yeah. do have a point. A lot of people try to practice every area. Like uh, maybe I wouldn't want to get into the bankruptcy area because yeah. it's not my forte. Yeah. Criminal law is a special area. A lot of people have to do that exclusively because it's so unique. Um, the proofs that are required, the Commonwealth has to prove you're guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So it's a little different. I didn't practice a lot in the, in the criminal area when I was a lawyer. Mostly did estate work, real estate work, yeah. as civil work. Um, I felt comfortable doing that. I felt yeah. comfortable advocating for my client. Yeah. But sometimes you got to tell your client, hey, you got a bad case here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do what I have to do to protect your rights, but don't expect always to win. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and right. then they have yeah. to make a decision, and you have to give them advice. Yeah. It's, it's not an easy job. But I think the main essence, and if you're not going to look after your client, you shouldn't be a lawyer. Yeah. Be a politician, look after the people, get elected for another type of job. Yeah. But as a lawyer representing a client, you know, you have to yeah. safeguard. Well, you know, uh, the doctor for geese is a psychiatrist or whatever, you know. He got a program now for uh, policemen, firemen, uh, soldiers, and uh, for f first responders. Now, like... They get to the scene, and, and the next thing you know, it's a blood all over the place or something. You know, and then it might affect that guy the rest of his life, oh, you know. Oh, that, that part. It, it causes him. So they're trying to get it now to, to be able to calm him down so uh, it causes divorce, it causes uh, suicide and everything because of some scenes keep coming back. I know I was just a rookie cop, and uh, the guy had a firework uh, factory over there on Finance Street that blew up and blew him up. Yeah. And then it was parts all over there. I not had no train. I never saw bodies all parts, you know. Yeah. Had another kid from uh, from uh, visiting from Germany, and he was a student, and he uh, studying over here, and he failed, mm -hmm. and he was so depressed. He was at Sears. They used to sell the guns, you know, shotguns, and the you know, he got to put over there, oh, oh, boom, blew his head off. Um, so I go. They got a call to go to uh, Sears Wilbox when it was on the when on Markley Street, you know, blood all over the place. Yeah. 
you know, but it didn't affect me. But when oh. I went home, what do you think my wife had? Spaghetti. Oh, I saw that red oh, sauce oh, and all that blood. Well, I'm going to say that thank has God to I was able to keep the things and it don't affect me now. Well, but judges. it'll affect somebody. Judges and, and the same thing here. Yeah, but I, I don't see the actual blood scene, but we'll see the pictures in the trial. And sometimes they're so graphic. You, you know, you can't look at them or you don't want the jury to look at all of them. You know, there's some things that are very yeah. graphic that you come running into. But I've had a lot of cases where the sadness of and the tone of the hearing is so sad, the testimony of what happened to the victim or whatever, that I'd almost have tears in my eyes. And a couple of times I had to stop the yeah, case yeah. and say, excuse that, because I don't want the yeah. jury to see well, me that's, crying. It's good that you did. But, uh, but emotionally, you can't hold them in there. No, you can't. And, and that's, that's because you're human. Yeah. <laughs> People think we're robots, but we're not. We're no. human beings. That's why it's important to look at who the candidates are, what their background is, right, right, the experience right. they have with people, because it's people that want justice yeah. to come before the court. Right. So I think it's important, and I, and I think that people don't look at judicial elections the right way. They don't study the candidates. They just yeah. don't. Because you can't talk about issues, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, you don't talk about property taxes yeah. and uh, who's going to raise them. Well, judges don't talk about yeah. that. So people don't look at it. Yeah, and... Uh, it's, it's an important position. Yeah, I... Uh, I that's what, there's sometimes a husband and wife get a problem and have a fight, so what's he do? He goes out, instead of, you know, calm down and try to settle, he go out and he start drinking, and he gets half drunk, and next thing he starts doing things that he, you know, so. Uh, this let man's killing him, just happened that. was a guy who was so disturbed with problems with his wife and his mother-in-law, went in the church and shot up all those people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are sat in mental health cases. Yeah, we yeah. We've got a lot of those kind of issues. You know, we talk about that, uh, uh, down in Texas where the guy went in there with a gun. There was no, there was only one exit to go there. Nobody could go there, hiding over there, you so know? So sad. I, I, I recommend it being a former policeman. I think I know a little bit. I think every church should have an emergency button to, directly to the police department and the, an emergency. There's an emergency where when the bank is uh, getting robbed, they press a button and the police go running over there to save the money. Yeah, you have a church should have the button put in to save the people. people. Wow, you know. great idea. So I, I mean, for security I mean, purposes, that may be helpful. <laughs> Hello, know. Governor. How about uh, doing something about that? Yeah, put a little uh, special. Get, get some of that state money, that giveaway money, and uh, put some uh, uh, alarms in the in the churches. Okay, and there'll be a policeman go running out there. Okay, save the people. The hell with the money. Okay, next. <laughs> All right, now what? Okay. Who are we going to put in jail now? <laughs> I don't know about that, but it's, it's a sad situation that, you know, when you don't have, um, you know, access, because some of those rural counties don't have police right there. That's the other issue. Yeah. You know? But not, you know, a, a small like town like that, yeah. by the time a police, they most right likely there. have, a, 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 like here, like uh, the further you go west, you know, it's covered by the state police. And uh, sometime when you get a call, oh. they'll tell you we have to you, you have to wait. You get third in line or so, you know. Yeah, I can't get so, through. and I another thing, you think about the mailman. <laughs> I think about the mailman. I think we ought to get to deputize all the mailmen, so they have a radio, telephone, right to the police station. They smell, they see, and they hear things that other people don't see. And they would be a good information. We'd cover the country like the do. You know, I started a program in Philadelphia. It's called the Police Probation Partnership. Oh, yeah. And it has three P's, my three initials, Paul P. Panapinto. I didn't come up with that name, Police Probation Partnership, but my staff <laughs> did. I said, you all deserve a raise. That's a great name. <laughs> but anyway, what it really was is to put the probation officers when the police would ride solo. They didn't have enough to put two in a car. Oh. So we had some of the probation officers hook up with the police for the community. You mean they ride with them? Ride with them. And they yeah. would help the police be eyes and ears. Yeah. And they knew the community because they knew who was on probation. Yeah. yeah. And maybe they wouldn't participate in arrest because that wasn't yeah. their job. We didn't want that. But they had vests. 
and they were able to go out in the community. Uh, I don't know if that program still exists today, but we got some federal funds for it. Well, yeah, I, and it was a good program. You know, when I, uh, it increases the presence yeah. uh, of you know probation with the police. Yeah, and and I think the community was um, like that. You yeah. know. Yeah, I know. Uh, when uh, when I was uh, juvenile, I was very close with uh, Mayor Rizzo, and uh, I asked him to maybe ride around. So they have a form to show insurance to cover that. So he's driving with that police officer in the case right. of any kind of accident. Right. So I would call it riding next to me with shotgun. Right. But our half hour is over. Wow, it's Judge, really great. give me the boxing gloves over All there. Right, here they are. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you the boxing gloves. You know. Life's a battle, so you gotta have gloves on it, beat them up, oh, scrub them up, hang them on the line. Okay, <laughs> now, nice all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for allowing us to come into the room and judge that uh, his relation with architect for that uh, Columbus uh, Monument, retired, beautiful. retired judge, thank and you. he looks like a movie actor. Okay, so here we go. Thank you so, thank much, you so much, and Allah's Salud. Salud. Thank you.